Hello everyone, today we're going to be making it so you can pick up these markers and collect them. Now to get started, we want to go under server script service and add in a script. We're going to rename this script to, for now we'll call it leader stats. And in here we're going to create data which will tell people how many markers have been collected by the player. So to do this, we need to create some variables. But first, before we can create these variables, we need to create a function that will be called only when players join the game. So to do that, we say game dot players dot player added colon connect function plr plr or you could put player anything that so you know that it's a player i'm just going to put plr short for player now what this means is any code that is inside of here will be called once a player joins the game that is all this means so in here we want to say local leader stats as that will be the name of where our data is going to be stored inside the player we're going to set that to an instance dot new and i'm going to put it inside of a folder now what this will do is it will create a brand new folder and we're going to put a comma after this folder and put plr and this means it will create a new folder inside of the player now what we can do is say leader stats which is this new folder dot name equals leader stats like so it must be spelt exactly like that or lowercase and that's that we've now got a folder in our player called leader stats now if we drop down we need to create a new variable and this will be the number of markers collected i'm going to call this markers found equals instance dot new and this will be an int value and we're actually going to put this inside of the leader stats now we're going to say markers found dot name equals and i'm going to call it markers found and by default we're going to say markers found dot value equals zero now this means that they will start with zero markers found and there we go i'm not going to close the script yet because we're going to be coming back to it later but if we now hit play you'll see we have markers up here zero we've not found any markers now by the end of this video we will be able to go up to a marker hit it and the markers found will increase by one and this marker will disappear so to do that what we want to do is go over to leader stats and we're going to need to create a marker variable now for each marker each marker will need its own value this will be a true or false value to decide whether or not we have yet obtained it. Now, a really easy way of doing this, rather than creating local variable blah -de blah blah local variable blah -de blah -de blah we can simply say local markers equals that. And by that, I'm in these two curly braces here. This creates an empty table. Now, what we can do is say for i, comma, v in pairs, now I'll explain this in a minute, but what we want to do is say workspace dot markers colon get children do. Now what this means is for the number of items inside of the markers folder, we are going to loop through this code here. So there'll be some code and for each item we'll loop through it. I is the index of the item and V is the actual item. Now I'm actually going to rename these so they have spaces in between their names just to make it look nicer when we actually have the inventory and now what we want to do is add the item add the marker to the markers table so we can say table dot insert and then in here we actually need the table which will be markers and then comma and the item we are adding which in our case would be v but we don't want to save the actual object we just want to save the name so we'll say v Dot name. So by the end of this, we're going to have a table full of the names of each of the markers. Now, once we've done that, we want to create another for loop, which this time will go through each of the names and add a new Boolean value, which is a true or false value, to the player, which decides whether or not it already exists. So I'm going to copy this local leader stats couple of lines up here, come down and paste that in again, and this will be called markers. Now, we already have a table here called markers, so we'll call this markers folder, like that. And once again, the, the exact same as the leader stats, it's going to go in the player, but we're just going to call it markers folder instead. In fact, we, we, we can get away with just calling it markers. Don't need the markers folder, as long as it is a folder up here. Now, this is where we're going to store all of our marker data. But, so we're just going to copy all of this up here and paste that in. Now, rather than this workspace.markers.getchildren, 
we are simply going to do markers. Now, rather than this table dot insert here, I'm just going to print markers, open bracket, I, and then what this will do is for each item in the markers table, it's going to print the name. So it's going to print the index of whatever we're currently on. So as you'll see, it should print bouncy marker, cave marker, podium marker, sliding marker in that order down into our output down here. Okay, it wouldn't be in the order, sorry, that was my mistake, but, but it will still print each of our markers, which is what we want. So now if we go over here, we can say local new marker equals instance dot new ball value comma, and here will be the markers folder. Now, it's basically going to be the same as this markers found up here, but we're going to say new marker, there will be a slight difference, you'll see in a minute, dot name equals markers i like so now as you saw when we printed out this markers i it printed each marker name so what this will do is create a new boolean for each marker name and then we're going to say new marker dot value equals false if we hit play what you'll see is under the player we've got a markers folder with four true or false values in for each of our markers now what we can do is add even more markers, we can add as many as we wanted, so say I added a new marker, and I called it test marker for now, I'll just call it test, test marker, and we hit play, you'll see we will get test marker as well. So you can see it just makes it nice and easy for when we add new markers, we don't have to keep going back and adding more variables. Let's make it so we can actually touch this marker and pick it up. Okay, so now we need to go under one of the markers. For now, I'm just going to go under the bouncy marker and add in a local script. Inside of this local script, the reason it's local means it only happens on the player's side, the client side. So we can make the marker disappear only for the player and not for everyone else. So to do this, we want to say script.parent, which will be the bouncy marker over here, dot touched colon connect function and then hit as well hit is so hit is just an argument we have to pass in um, and this will be the part of the player that hits the marker now what this will do is this is a function which any code in here will be called every time something hits the object so now I say something hits the object, that can be anything, another object can hit the object. So we need to verify it's a player hitting the object. So to do that, we need to say local player equals game.players colon get player from character hit dot parent. Now we'll say if player then, and this will only run code, this will only do anything in here if it's actually a player touching the part and not another object. Now what we want to do is say script.parent.transparency equals one. That will make it invisible or transparent is the technical term. We also want to say script.parent.cancollide equals false. And that will make it so you can't collide with it anymore. Okay, so everyone, I actually made a slight mistake. I was meant to put in a normal script in this bouncy marker as well. Sorry, this is my mistake. Copy all of this code and put it into the normal script. Just remove this dot transparency and dot can collide lines here. In here, we are meant to fire an event, which we then capture in here to make it invisible. So you can remove all of the all of this shenanigans in the local script. So we've just got transparency and can collide. Sorry, this is my mistake. Now in the bouncy marker, we're going to add in a remote event and we're going to call it hit. And then what we want to do is in the, in this script, we've got if player then, and we want to say script.parent.hit colon fire client. And then in here, we'll put player and we can close that now. And then in the local script, we want to say script.parent.hit.onClient event colon connect function like so and then we put all of this in now this is quite hard to understand at first it looks quite confusing but if you want me to do a separate video on remote events i certainly will okay Ryan, this should be the last mistake i made i promise 
Um, this, what we want to do is under replicated storage, we need to make a new folder. And we're going to rename it to marker events, like so. We're going to drag this hit into marker events and we're going to call it bouncy marker. Or whatever the name of your marker is. Just this time without any spaces. Instead of calling script.parent.hit, we're going to call game.replicatedStorage.markerEvents, colon, find first child, and then this will be script.parent.name. It's the name of the marker, like so. Oh, sorry, you do want, you do want a space in this, um, in this marker here. My lad, you do want you want it to be the exact same name as your marker up here. And we're going to keep the rest of the same for now. Other than we're going to say play out a comma part. But rather than part, it will actually be script.parent. Like that. Okay, now we've got to get the local script. I'm going to right click and hit cut. And then we're going to go down to starter player. Starter player scripts. And we're going to right click and paste into. Now in here... We're going to say, rather than we've got, here we've got script.parent.hit. Instead, we want game.replicatedStorage.markerEvents.bouncyMarker.onClientEvent, colon, connect. And then when we've got these brackets after function, we want to add part. And rather than script.parent, we'll just say part, like that. Now, if we test it, it should work. Now, I really do apologise for this video being a lot more complicated than it should have been. If I now go over and hit it, as you can see, it disappears. Now, you will see our markers doesn't actually increase here, our marker value. And if we go under markers and bouncy marker, you'll see it's not gone to true. Let's fix that up quickly. That is very quick. Under our script, after we've called this fire client, all we want to do is say player dot leader stats dot or markers found as it was called it was called markers found like so now we can't do a dot markers found because there's a space in it so rather than dot we have to do these square brackets and markers found like that and then dot value plus equals one and then we'll also say player dot markers because remember if we go over to our leader stats we've got markers as a folder here so player dot markers and then remember the marker name, which, so remember it has a space, so we have to use these square brackets. It's called bouncy marker. We could put bouncy marker, or we could do colon find first child, because remember this script is a child of the marker. We could just do find first child, and then script.parent.name, which is the name, so the marker, bouncy marker. And then we want to say dot value equals true. And now if we hit play, we might notice a bug with our markers going up more than one. Yep, as you see, it got up 27 times. But the best way of doing that is adding something called a debounce. So if we go in the script at the top here, we'll say db equals false. And then after this if player then we want to say if db equals false db standing for debounce then we'll call all that script and end here but straight after this false we want to say db equals true so then it won't call again and we're only going to set debounce to false again straight at the end db equals false now this still might encounter a few problems if it does there is an even better fix we can use. So let's just double check. We should be able to collect it and it should only go up one. No, so that's halved the amount it's gone up by pretty much. So what we can do is before this DB, we can wait a couple of seconds. I mean, it doesn't matter how long we wait. We're not going to be able to hit it again anyway. So we can. I'm just going to put wait five. The higher you wait, the better. They're not going to be able to hit the marker again anyway once they've got it. So it doesn't really matter what number you put in there, as long as it stops you from getting more than one point. There we go, and that's it. And as you can see, our markers has gone up to one, and if we go under markers, our bouncy marker is true, and the others are all false. So that's that, and then all we need to do is copy the script, paste it into each marker, and we don't need to change anything in the script because we've tailored it to the name of the part it's under. That's it for there. 
And then we just need to add some more events. So we've got a cave marker. We've got podium marker. And we've got a sliding marker. Like so. And then under our local script here, we can copy that, paste that three more times for each of our markers. So we've got cave, podium, and sliding. Like so. And there we go. And that's it. Now if we hit play, we should be able to get any marker we want. So I'm going to open up my player and open up markers. So this is the podium marker. If I click that, you'll see our bouncy markers all false. Our podium markers true. We should be able to click the cave marker and our markers fan will go up to two. As you see it does. And the cave marker is true. And that's the same with all of them. It works. So that's all I wanted to show you today, everyone. And as you can see, sliding marker... There's a problem with that because we need to rename this with a space in it. And then there's podium marker as well. Oh, sorry, bouncy castle marker. And there we go. That's it. That's all I wanted to show you today. Now, the reason I'm having problems is because my sliding marker doesn't have a space in it. But that's all fixed. And there we go. So, everyone, that is that. That is our markers are now working. In the next video, we're going to work on data stores so we can save the values of the markers we have already found and we will be able to save the number of markers we've already found so i'll see you in the next video everyone now i know this song was a bit longer and a bit messy and i do apologize for that i had a few unexpected errors some human errors but that happens that happens so sorry about that and i'll see you in the next video everyone goodbye